Hello, FOSDEM 2022. This is a presentation about uh, LVGL uh, graphic library on Onero operating system. First, we will introduce ourselves, then we'll see what is this uh, LVGL graphic library and its integration into Onero operating system. And then we can answer some question if there is any by chat. So let's introduce myself. I'm Philippe Koval and I'm involved full time on Onero project. I am a consultant from Astrolab I'm based in Rennes in France and I'm working full time for Huawei Open Source Technology Center, which is an open source team distributed uh, worldwide. Most of us are in Europe, but not only. And I have a special guest today. This is uh, Gabor Kish Vamoshi, who is a uh, founder of LVGL and uh, is also the CEO of uh, LVGL uh, company, which is uh, developing the LVGL software and providing site service and around LVGL. Thank you and welcome. So LVGL stands for Light and Versatile Graphics Library. It's an open source MIT licensed graphics library to easily create modern user interfaces or device for sure. LVGL's primary targets are the resource constrained embedded devices such as smartwatches, smartphones, various instruments, hygienic devices, medical devices, and things like that. Recently, LVGL got some exciting features to effectively work for desktop applications too. You can create even 4K apps that use the video card of your desktop to achieve high FPS. LVGL was started as my hobby project more than 10 years ago. For a couple of years, I used it only for myself, but in 2016, I shared it on GitHub. It turned out that there was a great need for a library like this. Since then, LVGL got more than 8,000 stars and 200 contributors on GitHub. It's frequently among the most popular C repositories of GitHub and was adopted by many large and popular projects. We have a good relationship with vendors like NXP, Dispressive, or Arduino, and RTUS projects like Natex, Zephyr, RTSRED, and recently Onero2. Those companies already adopted LVGL into their ecosystem. About a year ago, we have created LVGL LLC in order to provide a solid background for the library and to provide services for our customers. Let's see how LVGL works in action. It's a music player demo running on an NXP development board. This board is based on the IMXRT1050 microcontroller, which is a quite powerful one, running on 600 MHz. Normally you don't need this powerful MCU to use LVGL, but this great one achieved 60 FPS with 30% of CPU usage in average, even with complex image scaling animations, opacity, jumping bars, or screen size scrolling. The screen has a decent resolution with 480 by 272 pixels. And that's it. Let's learn more about the features of LVGL. In the background, you can see another demo which showcases the widgets. You can find buttons, charts, lists, sliders, images, dead view, keyboard, text input, checkboxes, various type of gauges, calendar, drop-down lists, and so on. In short, LVGL has all the controls that you might need to create the UI. You can simply create, delete, and adjust these widgets in real time. The users get used to the UIs of their smartphones, and they expect the same quality on other devices too. To give this experience to them, with LVGL you can draw anti alias shapes, use opacity, use various blending modes, smoothly scroll content, anim add, add animations, and so on. Basically, what you usually see in an Android application, that can be realized with LVGL too. The widgets of LVGL are highly customizable. They adopted the CSS like styling scheme and adopted the CSS boxing model, property names, cascading and inheritance philosophy as well, and even the CSS modern layouts like Flexbox and Grid. With these versatile layouts, the widgets can be easily positioned in a responsive way. 
Uh, nice smartphones. And EGI is not limited to touchpad or mouse. The UI created with iVGA can be navigated and used with keyboard by pressing the tab key to change focus. In fact, even a single rotary encoder supporting rotation and push is suitable to control the whole UI. You can also create multi-language UIs. LVGI supports UTF-8 encoding, mixing right-to-left and left-to-right languages, and the special requirements of Arabic and Persian languages as well. We have an internationalization library, which automatically collects the strings from the source code and exports them into YAML files, where you can translate them. After, the, after that, the library builds source code from the translations again, allowing you to select the current language of the UI in runtime. LVGL has a binding to MicroPython. MicroPython is a Python subset. Basically, it gives you Python-like experience on embedded devices, and this binding allows you to create UIs using LVGL in a Python GUI. Let's see how you can use LVGI in your project. LVGI is written in C and depends only on the standard C library headers. LVGI is also C++ compatible. Regarding the build systems, we support Make, CMake, but LVGI work, works out of the box with Manage Builds too. It means you can simply copy it into an Eclipse or VS Code project Refresh the project, and it just works. As LVGI is just a bunch of open source C and H files, it's fully vendor agnostic. You can build it on any microcontroller or board. There is no limitation in the display type either. Of course, you can use it with normal RGB displays, but it works for grayscale, monochrome, or any special type of, type of displays as well. RTUS, external memory, or GPU are only optional. LVGL scales very well. You can use it with entry-level microcontrollers and powerful PCs as well. Just to mention some interesting use cases, some will use LVGL to create a UI in a virtual reality environment. Some other users created UFE BIOS UIs Others integrated LVGL with Nintendo, but our official demos and examples are built to run in a web browser as well. To port LVGL to your system, usually you need only two functions. One, to copy the rendered image to the screen, and another, to read your input device, for example a touchpad. And that's it. If you want to make the most out of your hardware, LVGL allows you to replace any built-in draw functions, for example, to use a GPU in some cases. Or even the whole software rendering engine can be replaced. We have built-in support for SDL, which is a drawing library for desktop, and it uses the video card to render at lightning speed. Although it's not open source, but a very important milestone in LVGL's life. In January, we have released Squareline Studio, which is a professional drag and drop UI editor for LVGL. Squareline Studio is ideal for both hobbyists and professional teams, designers, and developers as well. On a promotional price, you can subscribe for a personal plan for only $9 and for a business plan for $89 per month. Being a proprietary software, it's out of the scope of FOSDEM, but you can learn more about Squareline Studio at squareline.io. So, that's it in short about LVGL. We will continue from here with the introduction of the Onirod project. Thank you. Thanks, Gabo, for explaining about uh, this LVGL library. Now I'm back to explain about uh, the Onero project and what is the relationship uh, to uh, this LVGL library. So Onero project is a, an open source project hosted at Eclipse Foundation and it's an operating system made for IoT devices. 
What is making this project a bit uh, specific is that it wants to target all range of IoT devices, the biggest one or the smallest one. So to do this, uh, we have to have uh, to support different kernel, and uh, one duty of this project is to focus uh, on interoperability and to make a, a consistent uh, development platform that can be flexible enough to target uh, different kind of use cases on devices. So our duty is to defragment uh, the development uh, of um, for embedded systems. So we want to do this by trying to break technology silos in terms of technology, of course, but also in terms of development tools, because developing for different kind of uh, device or platform can be really painful to developers because you have to support a different uh, the software development kit, a different uh, process uh, can be um, different from one system to another, and you're spending some time, a lot of time into setting up your tool chains or trying to get into your platform while it can be avoided by because most of your job is just writing code and compiling it and deploying a software. So one of our uh, efforts is trying to provide a unified tooling to build the, the software and also to reuse the common policies uh, for software development. That's uh, how our project wants to defragment uh, the development for embedded system and making a unified uh, Internet of Things operating system. So the Unior project is uh, uh, driven by uh, requirements, use case and requirements. One of the requirements we had, we, we wanted to uh, create a user interface. So to do this, we can rely on existing uh, open source UI toolkits. There are many supported on Linux. So we can use a famous one like a Qt, GPTK, iLightMount, or even HTML5 web framework. That will work because it's using uh, uh, Yocto layers on Linux kernel, it will work out of the box. But uh, how can we also support um, uh, microcontroller where Linux is not uh, the right uh, system to to power those kind of devices? Hopefully, LVGL is working on a very wide range of uh, devices, so we could support on our microcontroller flavor of only our devices. Those can run on Zephyr operating system, and then uh, LVGL can become a common denominator, because if it's running, it could run on a microcontroller, it could also run on a bigger system using a regular CPU. So in the end, if LVGL can provide a, like a cross-kernel application framework, since mean an application written from a microprocessor could run on a microcontroller without uh, too much porting effort. So the challenge was to prototype an application on uh, Linux and then try to rebase on the microcontrollers. So that's uh, one requirement we wanted to um, achieve uh, um, on Onero Jasmine release. So let's start about the Onero Linux flavor. Onero Core OS is already supporting Linux kernel and the distribution can be built out of the box in the base image. But uh, for our use case, we wanted to have um, to create a, a vending machine blueprint. This can serve as a reference uh, project that can be used to create uh, vending machines, obviously, or similar uh, devices. So using LVGL on Onero was not ready, so we had to make supporting effort. And uh, during the development of LVGL version 8, uh, LVGL is modular and already supported different backend like SDL2. Uh, I made some uh, tests, it was working fine, and also I noticed that there was some ongoing effort uh, to support uh, Wayland uh, graphics driver, because we are using Wayland on embedded system nowadays. So I helped into uh, integration of uh, on, uh, LVGL to support the BitBake uh, build system. If you don't know about BitBake, this is a, a build tool used to build uh, packages for Yocto or open embedded uh, distribution, and this is this uh, tool we are using for on your project. So each package are built using recipes files and all those uh, recipes are uh, collected into a, a layer. So each layer is named meta something and I made a supporting effort. And once it was ready, I shared it to the community into meta open embedded layer. 
Actually, he, I made the development on Onero project, but uh, since it was working enough, I decided to upstream at the same time. And uh, we are we are using it into meta blueprint uh, layer inside Onero project, and uh, at the same time, it was reviewed into Open Embedded. And uh, for the current release, uh, we uh, use our recipes, but for the next one, we would just update the meta Open Embedded layer, and then we will reuse the same recipes I wrote and. It will be now maintained by Open Embedded Community. This is a regular flow using the open source development. So we have the core OS, we have the library, and then we wrote two applications. One is a UI application, which is linked to uh, LVGL. Uh, currently, it's, uh, it's a static lab library because there is only one application running on our system. And this application is talking with a controller application, which is uh, dealing with input output, this means preparation of items that have been ordered by the customers. And both applications are synchronized and talking together using uh, web sockets. So this is a protocol over HTTP and uh, it's using a specific API which has been inspired by uh, WebSync's API. And WebSync's is uh, an API, uh, it's a project uh, which is uh, inspired by W3C Web of Things uh, specification effort. So it has some interesting semantics to, def to define the properties. Uh, here we are just dealing with an array, which is a selection of items, but it can also produce some events and uh, we can uh, reuse uh, the semantics and uh, have uh, and implementing some parser. So this application is using LG, um uh, libwebsocket for the communication. It's a native C application. And uh, those applications are built into a, a distro project. So it's a standalone project which is building the wall system. This means the OS and uh, all the specific uh, customization part can be done at the distro level. So we define a few variable which is indicating the, the screen size. So for the device we want to support. Uh, currently we are supporting uh, B68 from Seco and also the Raspberry Pi, which is quite uh, uh, common for this is quite practical for the community if they want to replicate uh, this vending machine. There is also a custom allocator using on Linux and also some customization for fonts. And the distro is also shipping some uh, configuration file like a systemd services to start uh, the Western compositor in kiosk mode. This means a full screen single application. So the vending machine uh, look uh, like this. Um, so user can select uh, different items and if you look in the back you can see some LED blinking. So those LED are this matrix uh, uh, I square C module. You need to connect it to the Raspberry Pi either here. It's very easy because I made uh, it to fit on the on the second row of the Raspberry Pi, so it just fit in. There is no ambiguity, so you can connect to it. And then uh, this Raspberry Pi is powering the vending machine, so you need to connect uh, HDMI, HDMI touchscreen and uh, the USB, uh, which is uh, ending the touch event. So you can then boot on your row distro from the SD card and the, it will appear on the screen and it starts uh, from the setting using the UI application and the user can select some item and if you look in the background you see this LED are toggling to uh, red this means that it's selected but not yet uh, prepared and uh, once the user confirm its uh, his order then the application is uh, the UI application is sharing the information to the control application and the LED are turning to blue. This means the preparation is in progress and once it's done, it's going back to the initial state. This is a uh, Onero vending machine and uh, you can uh, rebuild uh, from scratch uh, for this Raspberry Pi. And here another blueprint, this is a uh, Onero keypad. So it can look similar to the vending machine because it's a touch screen when user can select uh, some items. Here we are using the same product, but uh, it's uh, another project and uh, it's quite different from the Linux one. So it's running on Euro and it's using its uh, Zephyr flower. This means that we have uh, 
using a different kernel which is um, tailored for microcontroller where Linux will not suit. So this uh, blueprint, uh, the keypad is using Zephyr uh, operating system. So we wrote a specific uh, application. It's still a work in progress and it's uh, linked uh, using Meta Zephyr layer, which is a collection of recipes for Zephyr kernel and built uh, using the same BitBake tool we are using on Linux. Unfortunately, this uh, the layer is only supporting LVGL version 7. That's the reason we had to write uh, the application again from scratch because there is some not the API is not very compatible yet. So, but anyway, we made this uh, this uh, investigation effort and it's working out of the box on on the NRI five two eight four zero board. Uh, you can get this uh, easily. So the plan for the future in the next uh, Onero release, it will be named uh, Goofy. We want to align uh, LVGL version between Linux and Zephyr, so we need to update uh, the Zephyr recipes to version 8 of LVGL. And this is uh, some work in, in going in our team, and thanks for Bartosz for this upstreaming effort. It's uh, about to be merged if it's not yet done. And we are also doing some effort to do some customization using uh, K-config mechanism where you can select some specific feature using a graphical menu. So the challenge is will be to create uh, uh, another application that can be cross kernel. So I wrote this uh, dialog LVGL application when I wanted to learn about LVGL. Um, you probably know about uh, the dialog or whiptail program. It's used uh, in many system to draw some widgets using NAND courses. If you are, if you ever install Debian in text mode, this is what is using to display different options and menus. So I decided to rewrite this application, but relying on LVGL uh, toolkit. So this application is compatible with Dialog, and it can serve as a reference uh, application to dig into uh, LVGL. So now it's time to make a summary about uh, how LVGL and its uh, usage in Onero. So LVGL is a portable library. It has been made for microcontroller, but it's also designed to support uh, different uh, graphics uh, backend and uh, even Linux one. So since it's a plain C library, you can uh, compile it on Linux and just uh, uh, use a Linux uh, API for display, like uh, the Wayland uh, graphic system, which is now the, uh, the reference one in a Linux system. There is also SDL2, which can be used for simulators on other systems like Linux. It works on Linux, but it's uh, also working on Windows and maybe others. So Onero is a cross kernel application, and we made a couple of blueprints uh, to support uh, LVGL. One is a vending machine running on Linux and the other one is a keypad running on Zephyr. So can, you can use those uh, blueprints uh, as a, a, uh, an entry-door for LVGL and to build uh, an LVGL project and a distro from scratch. That can be interesting if you never did this before. If you want to learn more about uh, Onero, you can visit uh, our FOSDEM online stand you can see more details about uh, different uh, blueprints like the vending machines. There is a longer video where you can learn about uh, what is this project and its uh, internal and different aspect of the project from development, security and so on. And uh, of course there is a chat room, you can ask some question and uh, you can also ask some question uh, after this presentation and I'm also sharing some resources if you want to learn more about uh, LVGL on Hero and uh, related project. Uh, and thanks a lot and uh, feel free to um, ask uh, at uh, LVGL forum or on Hero chat if you want to, if you want to try it or if you need support. Thanks and see you at next for then. Okay, so I stopped hearing uh, Philip in, in my ears at least. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Q&A session in the Graphics Dev Room. Thank you for being in the Graphics Dev Room at FOSDEM 
virtual, sadly. And welcome. Uh, I'll just start asking some questions right now. So, uh, Gabor, um, I, the most technical question that I see is from Mathieu. Um, what is the backend for LVGL input support? Is it lib input based? Hi, uh, thanks for asking. Um, actually, LVGL is hardware agnostic, so um, you can use any backend you want. The only thing matters is that you need to provide the callback function that provides the coordinates for LVGL. You can read that coordinates from lib input, uh, from a touch panel via SPI or, or anything. Something I can add about uh, lib input support is that um, I work on the um, on the port for Linux for LVGL, and uh, there is um, originally there was a SDL2 backend for graphics, and which is also supporting um, I/O. And uh, the community made a, a Wayland port, and as you maybe know, Wayland is really tied to lib input. That's uh, how problem are split. So lib input is in charge of uh, handling I/O through um, its uh, well on the graphics uh, adapter. That's how it works. Um, what can I say? Maybe on other Linux system, we could use uh, other input drivers, but you have to, to deal with uh, integration with the UI part too, so the graphics part. Then from Leon, hi Leon, um, really nice. With uh, with which Yocto releases is LVGL V8 available in the upstream meta, um, open embedded? Also, in which Yocto release is the latest version of Onero based? Yes, I wrote the recipes for LVGL um, uh, Yocto. At that time, Onero was based on the uh, Dunfield uh, Yocto branch, so this is uh, the LTS version. Uh, which uh, which was the base for the FGL integration, and I made the upstream. I try, as I explained on one slide that uh, I tried to upstream it uh, at OpenAmedit first to get some feedback from from uh, OpenAmedit community, and at the same time we have a staging layer inside Onero that was uh, shipping the recipes, and uh, upstreaming at that time in, in uh, OpenAmedit was. Uh, I don't know exactly, but I think it was on Easter branch. And uh, then I made the, the, the backporting effort to um, Onero. So we were using Dunfield on the Jasmine release of Onero, which should be released in maybe some weeks now. And the next version, because we want to have a long-term support, it will be based uh, on the next um, long-term release of uh, Yocto, which is Kirkstone branch, and uh, it will be supported for several years. That's uh, that's the plan. So we, we don't want to to um, duplicate or the maintenance force on the Yocto side. We're just uh, piggybacking to it. That's uh, the strategy. Um, so something that can be also added to this question that we are, as I explained, we are supporting several kernels. So we have also LVGL supported uh, for Zephyr kernel. And uh, we have it not in a specific layer. It's something which is a, a layer tied to a Zephyr um, uh, kernel. So that's a duplication of sources. And something that would be really interesting in the future. I don't know if it's even possible. So if there is somebody from Open Amid community, let us know. It would be really cool to have a layer with libraries that can work on uh, different kernels. So this means a layer with, uh, let's say, uh, kernel agnostic libraries, and you can then build it along the Linux kernel or the Zephyr kernel or another one if it's portable. portable. So that can be a, a bit challenging to do, but uh, that will show so the flexibility of BitBake. Uh, I think I answered the question. Then the final question, I don't know for whom of you is this the best answer. Is there a simple tutorial to get this running with Yocto for Raspberry Pi 3? And I want to add to that, when I looked at um, LVGL, I couldn't find any information in the readme or something on how to go about installing this, especially since you're using Gabor, you're using different Git sub modules and this and that, which is 
always a bit difficult to work with. So I, I'm guilty for this. That. I'm guilty for this because I, I promised to uh, make the documentation <clears throat> for how to get started. And uh, somehow we are, I was waiting that we are finishing to release our, 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 our on your release, and then I wanted to document the GL side. But uh, yeah, feel free to raise a ticket, and I will try to help you. But anyway, to answer the question, uh, there is no direct support of LDGL uh, <coughs> for any Linux system, as far as I know. <coughs> but I can share some documentation from Oniro about uh, using LDGL on the um, on Raspberry Pi. So the question is about the Raspberry Pi 3, but uh, we were using the Raspberry Pi 4 as a reference uh, board. But I know you can uh, compile uh, Oniro for Raspberry Pi 3 as well. Uh, maybe the performance is slightly different, but uh, it will work. You just need to uh, add um, to adjust the configuration variable. But uh, we are not supporting all the Raspberry Pi. We just stick it to the latest one to make sure it is uh, reproducible. So I can share some links. Uh, I can share them in a graph in the talk room, and once the talk is over, you will find the link. And uh, well, so if somebody wants to to share them to the to the graphics room. So the first link is about, so it's doc on your project slash project slash blueprint slash latest slash, slash AN slash latest slash vending machine. And there you have a chapter how to replicate the vending machine demo that's been showcasing. And uh, you can um, build it for the Raspberry Pi 3. Just make sure to change the matching variable. It should be Raspberry Pi 3 and not uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Maybe so you can, you can paste that link after Q&A is over, after the questions die down a bit. Yep. Okay, and uh, there is um, something you should know about the Raspberry Pi 3. It's supporting 64 bits or 32 bits. I will recommend to use a 64 bits, even if there is no, no specific value to add a 64 bits, but it will be closer to Raspberry Pi 4. So that's uh, my suggestion. And if there is any problem, let, uh, let us know. You can join uh, our neuro community, there is some different channels, or you can just file a ticket somewhere at LVGN and I will try to help for sure. I see more questions. They seem to be answers to questions which also turned up. I am not sure what triggers the question system of FOSDEM, so it could just be that there's a question mark in there and then it turns up. Or because people upvoted something, that could also be a reason why it turned up there. I, I don't know what hap what's happening there. So that is, seems to be the answer to all the questions. We have 10 minutes left. Is there anything you guys still want to talk about? Gabor, for instance, I didn't hear you that much during the Q&A session. Mm, not really for the Q and A section, but uh, in the presentation, I was talking about our uh, Square Nice software and told that it is released. Uh, it's already released, but it will be released only tomorrow. I just wanted to correct this. Okay, thank you. Is there anything you would like to add, still, Philip? I can ask one more question to Gabor. Is there any device uh, that were very di more difficult than others to, to get LVGL working on it? And why? Uh, sorry, repeat it, please. I didn't understand the beginning. Uh, sorry. I was just asking and um, if there are any experience you can share about some devices what, that were more difficult than others to port uh, LVGL to and why? Mm, usually it's quite easy to port LVGL. The difficulty rises when you want to want to port LVGL to a, to a device which is very limited in resources. So if it's slow or doesn't have enough RAM or flash, you need to do some tricks, uh, disable modules, lower LVGS RAM usage to make it fit to that system. But if you have a state-of-the-art modern microcontroller, porting LVGL shouldn't cause any issues. The most difficult part is setting up all the tools and uh, getting into the ecosystem. Uh, actually, the tooling is also quite simple because you can use Make, CMake, or Manage Build Systems as well. So usually you just need to 
copy IVGA to your projects and it can work together with the rest of your project very easily. And don't you have any dependencies issues sometimes on different uh, standard libraries or? Mm, naturally, because uh, LVGA doesn't have any dependencies except the standard C headers, uh, string copy or mem copy or things like that. Okay, and this is a common denominator of, of the platform you were working on. Sorry? So I'm saying this is a common denominator of all the platform you were working on, so uh yeah sometimes we found uh, issues with non-standard compilers for example visual studios compiler has some non-standard non features or misses some standard c features but we tried our best to to fix them and make it work with this usually not standard stuff of c compilers mm -hmm. so yeah really i can encourage you to to try a VGL your system because I'm pretty sure that you can make it work easily. Yeah, and something I can also share is that um, during the presentation I um, I was talking about the Zephyr port uh, to to uh, integrate the latest version in Zephyr, and that's something that uh, has been wrote, write, written by some member of our team. Uh, thanks, Bartos. And uh, the review has been the review code um, has been done, and it will be merged in the next. Uh, uh, next open window for merging, so it will be in uh, up to date Zephyr. That's something uh, that I didn't uh, explain in detail in the presentation. So yeah, having the same uh, the same version will make the port uh, the porting effort much easier. And I I also read from the project that you want to introduce uh, semantic versioning in the project, right? Uh, yes, mm, to be perfectly honest, in the past years, we were very strict about it. We really didn't introduce any breaking changes in, in minor versions, but we have realized that we need to be a little bit looser. And in the latest versions, we allowed to, to make slight API changes in marginal features or marginal widgets to, to have these things fixed because it's very easy to to fix these parts in, in the user's code as well. So we didn't introduce major breaks in minor versions, only something that you can fix in five minutes. That sounds reasonable. But uh, yeah, I also need to tell that um, LVGL was criticized by people sometimes because uh, we introduce really major breaking changes when we have a new major version. And for example, our current version is version eight. It's absolutely not compatible with, with version 7. You need to do a lot of porting to uh, to make it work with the new version. And we try to um, try to make our best to, to lower the incompatible issues, even in major versions. But yeah, sometimes things need to be changed to to get something better. Yeah, that's why if it was that easy, no software engineer will work. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. But but that's that's um, something to be developed as well because uh, sometimes um, and I've heard this from from other people that it can be difficult to design a UI for when you're using um, a toolkit which is meant for engineers and not for graphic designers. So yeah, what's the solution you're trying to to provide with? Um, he said, uh, IDE uh, tool will be really appreciated by uh, teams who are working on different aspects of the product, yeah. Uh, it's a great question, and, and thanks for asking this, because um, as I mentioned, we will release Squareline Studio tomorrow, which is a drag and drop UI editor software. It's especially uh, designed for, for graphics designers. You can uh, put together your UIs using your mouse without writing in a single line of code. Um, I also need to tell that it's a proprietary software and we'll have a very friendly uh, licensing. It will be this is for not what Cloudflare is about, so okay, sorry, that's it. The minimum. Okay. And uh, do you have any comment on? web technologies like CSS or more when you can make it 
um, describe a user interface more a more declarative way or using separating the structure and the layout and so on? Um, when we design the new features and plan them for LVGL, we usually get some inspiration from, from the web technologies, um, mainly from CSS. So we have copied a lot of properties and a lot of uh, ideas from CSS. We have the CSS-like inheritance system. We have something like uh, pseudo states and pseudo uh, classes in LVGL as well. So if you know, know CSS, you can use LVGL style system uh, quite easily. There are some attempts to, to implement a markup language for LVGL, um, but it's still in, in an early stage. We have an open issue for that. If someone is interested, uh, please comment and I will uh, give some link to the discussion. Markup, what do you mean to create uh... Hyperlinks uh, or something like this, or um, something like HTML. So, if you create or write an HTML-like description of the UI, um, a compiler or something like a compiler can convert it to uh, basically any language, preferably to C. Okay, that's something saying inspired by QML, I believe. Definitely yes. Mm -hmm. The other big player who are carefully monitoring is QT because, yeah, they are very big and doing a lot of great stuff. And uh, QML is also a great thing, and we, we are about creating something like this for a VGL. That's interesting. We, is any, any more questions? Just have a look at the, I don't think any. We have about a minute left, so. Okay. 20 minutes is, is not that much time, apparently, for Q&A in the virtual world. <laughs> That's quite surprising, quite good. Okay. Next, next year, we should have a VGL dev room only. <laughs> well, next year, if you restructure the talk and make it a bit more technical about what you've done in the past year, what you're planning to do, and what, what difficulties you had, then it's per it will be perfect for the graphics dev room. Uh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, see you again next year and thanks very much and thanks to the audience and see you all next year, hopefully live without any threat of any virus hanging over our heads. Who knows? Hopefully not anymore. Let's let's hope for a real life fast them. It's much better than virtual. Even though the organizers did a wonderful job with this tool. Thanks.